Okay, um, next up is we're, now that we have the, the cam bearings in, um, we're going to install the crankshaft. Now one thing that we are going to do different is originally this engine had these plastic thrust washers in them. Um, and we ordered a set of metal thrust washers from Onan Parts. And so uh, basically what we're going to do is this is the, the front bearing or the bearing plate. Um, depending on the engine, it may be the front, maybe the rear. Uh, I know some people call it the rear and some people call it the front. So this is the bearing plate. I'm just going to go by bearing plate. Um, and what I've done is I've got, this is the, the new thrust washer, so we're just going to toss that aside. And um, you want to make sure these oil grooves are on the outside. I've put grease behind it as per the manual. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the crankshaft um, in, the, in the bearing plate. And what I've done with the crankshaft is I've already put an assembly lubricant on it. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, Put the crankshaft in. I've oiled up both the, the main bearing journals and then we're going to um, put the gasket on the bearing plate and then uh, tighten down the uh, bearing plate to spec which I think is 35 uh, newtons and then we're going to measure the end play. And so once we get everything in there and we're working on tightening them down I will come back and I'll go over uh, how we measure the end play and whether or not we need shims or not. Okay, now that we have our crankshaft installed, which is a pretty simple process, we have the the uh, bearing plate bolts torqued down to 35 newton meters. We have not put any thread sealing on them yet. Uh, we want to make sure we get the end play correct. Uh, the end play for the B43G is 0 .006 to 0 .012 inches. And so what we've done is this is the 0 .0012 uh, feeler gauge. And what we're going to do is you see, and I want you to look at this gap right here, and you can see we can move the crankshaft back and forth. You see that gap widening and um, closing. So what we're going to do is we're going to move it. We're going to put the feeler gauge in there. And 0 0.012 is our maximum width for uh, in play. And clearly this is just a little too um, loose. Now, in fairness, this engine had one shim on it before when we took it apart. So my guess is we're going to have to put one shim on to start with. Um, now, the manual specifically says that we should start with no shims, and since we're replacing the thrust washers, I have to start with no shims. Um, so what we have to do now is we're going to take these bolts back out. We're going to take the crankshaft back out of the engine, and we'll sh I'll, I'll show you um, putting the crankshaft back in the engine once I get the shims on. But um, these are the shims. Um, just thin pieces of metal. Uh, you can order them or they'll come in your engine. Uh, it really depends um, on, on what you're doing. Um, so we're going to install the shims next. Okay, um, one thing I just wanted to go over before we started taking everything apart is I have the shim here in the micrometer. Um, you can see that the shim is 0 .005 inches. Um, and what we've done is we've gone ahead and we figured out our total end gap and that's 0 .017. So clearly, if we add one shim, we should get in within our with we should get our in play range that we're looking for for the cam or for the crankshaft. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull all this apart. And we're going to install one shim, and then we're going to put it all back together, and with the hopes of that our one shim will get us within spec. Okay, now that we have everything apart, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up our thrust washer here that has the grease on it. We're going to install our one shim and make sure you get the it in locking pins. And we're going to put our thrust washer back on and then we're going to tank and we're going to put our crankshaft back through our bearing. Then we're going to put the crankshaft back into the engine. Be sure that you don't hit the connecting rod journals on the engine block. So this does take some patience. And then you have to line it up with the main bearing on the flywheel end of the engine. That takes some patience as well. Now what I did is I don't I don't have the crankshaft turned correctly to get it in the engine. So we're gonna turn the crankshaft, there we go, slide it in, and now we've got that in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to tilt this back a little bit like that. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the bearing plate around to where the front of the bearing plate, this notch right here, is in the, uh, the camshaft cover. We're going to install the bolts again. And while we install the bolts, we're going to um, torque them down to 35 newton meters once again. And, um, and then we'll come back and check our end play. Okay, now that we have our crankshaft back in and our uh, cap bolts are torqued down to 35 newton meters, um, what we're going to do is we know that our, our minimum, minimum end play is .006. So we, I pull out the .006 feeler gauge. We can still see that there's some in play in there. And what I'm going to do is, that's 0 .006, so we're not, it's not too small. So we still have the in play we need. And we know that our maximum is 0 .012. So I'm going to pull out the 0 .012 feeler gauge. And then what I'm going to do, same thing again. And it really doesn't fit. So let's see if we can't figure out exactly what our in play is. Let's try 0 .009. So 0 .009 feeler gauge in there, eh, it just barely fits. So our in play is between 0 .009 and 0 .01, .01 um, which is within spec. So now we have an installed crankshaft with the correct in play. Um, so now our crankshaft is good to go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these bolts out individually, not all together, and we're going to put thread sealant on them. Since you can see that the bolts go through to the crankshaft or the crankcase, we're going to put thread sealant on each one of these bolts and um, we're going to torque them back down, but we're going to do it individually. That way um, we don't lose any of our specs or anything like that.